Hi, Mr. Corsi here. Now, if you haven't reached this point in a series of videos by watching the first two and constructing these two Penrose tiles, the kite on the left and the dart on the right, then that's not a worry. You're able to download these two tiles by going to the link below the video. When you click on that, this picture should open, but in your browser. And then what you do is right click and save as a .svg file or in some computers it might be as a source file and you should get the file called penrose.svg appearing on your computer and open it using the Inkscape software and you'll be at this stage. Now we're going to experiment with tiling with these two tiles, do some explorations with them, but we need to check first that your software is set up correctly for this activity. So there should be no page outline. Go to this button. Uh, you should have this show page border unchecked. You should have pixels as unit measurements and display units as pixels there. If we go to this right hand button here, the Edit Global Inks Inkscape preferences. We should have behaviours, steps, 36 degrees for rotation snaps. Uh, it's normally set at 15. We want it at 36 degrees. Final thing, the snapping controls. We want that there to be enabled. So that should be greyed out. That then enables snap nodes, paths and handles. It also enables snap cusp nodes, including rectangle corners, and it enables snap other points. Uh, it also enables snap centers of objects. That shouldn't be enabled. So really just these three, this one, this one, and this one. So check that these snapping controls are activated. Now, there are two routines, duplication and rotation, that we'll need to practice first before we can merely go into attempts at tiling with these. So first of all, duplicating. As you can see, there's one tile called the kite. There's one tile called the dart. If so if we click the kite one and we want to duplicate that, if we go to the edit menu, you can see the duplicate here has key controls, control, held down plus D held down. That's what happens in my computer. You might have something different there. So I'm pressing control D. I now have a second copy of that. Let's try it again with the dart tile. Click on it and control D. Another copy appears. Now you'll notice when I move, say, this dart around close to the kite, there's a little snapping goes on, a little label appears, cusp node to cusp node, and it snaps precisely uh, at the correct place. We also need to be able to rotate this shape. Now, the first time you click it, you get the selection handles. Click it again, they turn into rotation handles. If you drag with these, you get free form rotation. Hold the control T down and it now snaps in 36 degree steps. So we're able then to shift that around. Now, these two tiles are not allowed to join like this. As you can see, the patterns are very obviously not matching. So let's click that again to get the rotation handles holding the control T key down, there's one way of snapping that to the kite tile. And that's a perfectly valid way to join these two tiles together. Let's get another kite shape. Let's do control D to duplicate it. Let's click it again to get control handles, hold the control key down to get it in steps of 36 degrees, and then let's rotate it so that that then fits into place. So there's one uh, set of three tiles, which are actually all meeting around this point, two kites and one dart around that point. Now, 
exercise. I think you should practice some of this yourself. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer, a new layer. I have one layer in this. Uh, layer, add a layer and call it template. Add it above the current uh, layer, template. Let's add that. So there it says template layer. And let's put a square. So I drag a, a rectangle, type in a thousand pixels, and type in a thousand pixels. Let's move out, minus key, zoom out slightly. So this template, let me move it along slightly. This template is on a template layer. Let's lock that so that nothing can alter it. And we'll go back to layer one. Here's the three tiles that are originally joined together. Let's drag them as a mass. Now, you notice you can also control D, duplicate these three, and even click the three of them, hold the control key down, and I can rotate the whole group. And you notice the whole group snaps into the correct position. So here's a challenge for you. Attempt to make a tiling using these two tiles so that there's no gaps, no overlaps, complete edge to complete edge, and the patterns, the green and red patterns must match. Create a tiling that at least covers the area of that square. So stop the video and try that yourselves on the Inkscape software. So here's my attempt at doing that tiling, covering that square with tilings, no gaps. And it will be different from the one you've done, but there will be similarities. One of the frustrating but interesting aspects of trying to tile with these Penrose tiles is the symmetries that you begin to develop and you build out the tiles and then you discover that you've got a space where no tile can fit. You have to go back and pick a bit and build it up again. If we look at the tiling that I've created here, there's a point that has five darts around it. Here's a point that has five kites around it. Here's a point with a mixture of kites and darts around it. Next question I'd like to ask you is how many distinct ways can these tiles fit around a point? So here's your next challenge, challenge two, where you have to try and find as many different patterns as you can where these tiles fit around a single point. Two examples given, the sun on the left where five kites fit and the star on the right there where five darts fit around the point. So stop the video now and try this challenge. So there are seven distinct arrangements of these two tiles around a point. And we can divide them up into two groups. On the left there will be an arrangement with no darts and the six arrangements in the other group will contain darts. So of these six arrangements that contain darts, we're going to divide them up into three separate groups. This first arrangement of the six that involve the dart will involve this angle here. The angle up here will involve these two arrangements. And this third angle down here will be involved in the last three arrangements. So one arrangement with this angle, two arrangements involving this angle, and three arrangements involving this angle. 
Now the first of these two arrangements has an axis of symmetry down here, so this dart, the mirror image of this dart, will appear over here. And this second arrangement also has two darts, and it has a horizontal axis of symmetry. So another image, a mirror image of the dart, will appear below this one. So that's the arrangements there involving the spiky angle here. It each has two uh, darts in it. Now the last three arrangements involving this angle here have an odd number of darts appearing at. This one has one, this one has three, and this last one has five. Now this last arrangement we've already seen, it's called the star. So let's just remind ourselves what we have. We've got seven arrangements coming up. One with no darts, one with one dart involving this angle, two with two darts involving this spiky angle, and three arrangements with one, three, and five darts involving this angle here. We fill in with kites. So let's start from the left-hand side and let's fill in the gaps in the only way that's possible in each case with kites. So here's one that we've already seen also. This one's called the sun. This next arrangement let's fill in with, in this case, two kites. And we get an arrangement called the ace. And next we have a pattern called the jack. Here's the other arrangement involving two tarts. This one's called the juice. And here's the first of the last group. And this is the queen. Finally, followed by the king. So that completes the seven arrangements that are possible for these tiles to fit around a point. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. And that's Mr. Corsi signing out.